early data, what is this? This is an IntelliKeys assistive device, um, which has a matrix of uh, touch switches behind it, and then these swappable um, overlays, and each overlay is like a little bit different. You see this one has like mouse and keyboard, QWERTY keyboard, and this has like a bigger kind of alphanumeric keyboard, and it uses a um, photo cell to determine which overlay you have installed. Um, and this is a really useful device, but unfortunately it's no longer supported, and the driver downloads firmware over USB from the computer, like a Windows computer. And so um, if you're not running like Windows, and I, you know, maybe it runs on Windows 10, um, but other devices like you know Chromebooks or tablets with mobile can't use this because they don't have that driver firmware to download um, into this device. But what we can do is use uh, one of our USB host feathers. And what this does is HID translation. So um, this chip enumerates the IntelliKeys through the USB connection, downloads the firmware, and then asks it what overlay it's got and tacked an amazing job reverse engineering um, the original driver. And then to connect it to something like uh, an iPad, you would connect uh, using, it's called like a camera kit. And here I've got like the notes app up. Um, and then you just give it a second because it needs to download that firmware. It'll beep when it's ready. And then you can um, type on this and it shows up just like keyboard input. So, hello. Um, I space, oops, I space am space. It's tough to type on a tell key. <laughs> All, right. All right, good enough. Good work. Working. Early data, what is this? This is me testing out the Feather RP2040 um, with e paper support, it's the Think Ink board. Uh, so, this Feather RP2040, it's great because it's got 264K of RAM, which you need because you have to buffer e ink displays. And it's got a standard 24 pin connector. Um, pretty much every display. Uh, for e-ink that's not like a e-reader display, like these standard static ones, color, you know, monochrome, uh, tricolor, etc. They all have the same pinout on this 24-pin connector, uh, which makes this feather really great for making all sorts of e-ink projects. So let me line this up and run the test. We're using a Pico to program the RP2040 through mass storage. Um, this works really fast, and then when it passes, it lets you know by beeping and also changing the e display. So coming soon to the Adafruit shop. Early data, what is this? Hey, this is an Adafruit RP2040 Feather with DVI, and it's driving this monitor to make some flying toasters. Phil B updated our guide on Pico DVI to add a couple fun screensavers, so that's one. And then let's load up got a couple others here we've got aquarium so i basically said hey here's my two favorite after dark um screen savers hold on it's loading up and then give it a second it's like thinking thinking and then aquarium i love this cool. because it was just like fish <laughs> and it was a uh, pretty chill and peaceful there's also um a very cool max headroom demo um Starring uh, JP. TV host. Uh, but you can customize it with your own <laughs> graphics as well. So check out the RP2040 DVI Feather. You can drive monitors really easily in Arduino in the Adafruit shop. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? This is me testing out Scott's latest CircuitPython build with DVI output support. Look, this is on a monitor uh, connected, an HDMI monitor connected to the DVI output, and it's running CircuitPython. So I can uh, run codes. For example, I've got this cool port of Turtle, which is, you know, like logo um, yeah. for CircuitPython. That's cool. And then there's also, let me run the uh, Sierpinski triangle demo. That one worked really well, too. So I'll go copy and paste. So you can now do graphics really easily, um, especially if you like CircuitPython, mm -hmm. using Display I.O., but to an HDMI monitor. It's pretty cool. I love triangles. Okay.
Okay, and we got some samples. Uh, yeah. Things in and some uh, coming soon. A little yeah. bit of everything right now. So, okay, this is the tea mag. So, I was just like digging through, like, at a pile of, of chips from like a couple of years, and I was just like, oh, finally can get it. So, this is a 3D magnetometer from TI. And then this is kind of cool. This was actually Anne's idea. This is a, um, and actually, I have a prototype built of it so I can show it. Was, yeah, so we're getting really close. Just we have DVI, so that means we have video, we've got keyboard stuff, we've got mouse stuff we've got joysticks Joysticks. so this is a um pc joystick Control to stem a qt adapter so um this is a at tiny and it's in doing seesaw so you can get the analog inputs and button inputs and um convert them over um i suppose yeah. you for reading so this is kind of I, cool. i'm gonna say it was great when we first started getting Wi-Fi on microcontrollers. Yeah. Super cool, amazing. Now we finally get like video out. Yeah. Because like video was like, that was like for a microcontroller. Normally you'd like, I have to use a computer. Yeah. It's been around for a while. I was talking about like really low yeah. cost, super fast, instant video out on microcontrollers. And then be able to plug in something like a PC controller, like yeah, a yeah, game yeah. controller. Yeah. Get that, get that. Cool. For Raspberry Pi esque, but Very cool. um, shrunk down and then super low cost. Okay, what else? Okay, this is um a redesign of our feathers is the one side that's the other side yeah. of the uh feather uh feather wing tft plus joystick so this board just had got like the worst everything had to be redesigned um you know that'll be funny after after we say like the chip shortage is over over like which board got this board got the worst. Is it the same? No, sorry, the clue got the worst. The clue, like almost every part is. Is it still the clue if we replace everything? Is it, the, you know, the, the phrase, like if you replace a plank on a boat, is it the same boat? Yeah. Is it still the clue now? It's, well, it's not in stock, so no. So it's still not the clue. Um, and then this is a quick board I just I put together. It's a 18 bit ADC, uh, the MCP uh, 3421. I thought that could be handy. Maybe you need an 18 bit ADC. It's slow, uh, but maybe you don't care. Maybe you're like, I just need something. Oh, uh, and then this is kind of neat. I actually have this one as a finished prototype as well. Um, so just give me a second. I'm just digging through. There's a bunch of stuff that I can see here that y'all can't see here. It's really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff Piles here. of stuff. Because it's like, we wanted to do more top secret, but we're going to save it. So that. this is, yeah, this is the FUSB. So let's go to the overhead real fast. Okay, so this is a chip that um, is I squared C and... Um, can do power delivery communication with USB Type-C. So the idea is that you can connect this to a microcontroller and you plug in USB Type-C here and it will, um, it'll default give you five volts, then you can request like up to 20 volts. And then um, you can get that higher V bus out here and you still get the data plus data minus line. So it's kind of like a USB-C hacking board. It could be interesting because um, I, I definitely, there's projects where it's like, it would be so cool if you plugged in a microcontroller board into a power delivery and you could get like 12 volts and you could run your motor. You don't need two power supplies. You don't need USB and something else. It has all in one. So this is going to be um, kind of neat. This is the FUSB 302. Do you have any other things you want to show before we get out of top secret? Uh, no, because we we should do some questions. We're, yeah, we're going to do some questions. Yeah. Okay. That is this week's top secret.